The Burdekin River catchment area of North Queensland is Australia's largest irrigated sugar growing region. The vast majority of sugar cane in this area is flood irrigated, but a trend towards subsurface drip irrigation is growing, encouraged by yield increases and reduced water and fertiliser use. Several growers have installed subsurface drip irrigation with the aim of increasing the profitability of their farming enterprise. Evan Shannon is the manager of Davco Farming. Davco installed a pilot project of 300 hectares on the Oakey farm north of Ayr. Evan spoke about some of his experiences with drip irrigation. Oh look, the beauty, particularly on a water year situation, I mean, to get this uh, to establish, you know, I used, um, I think it was 16 millimetres of water. If that had been a fair irrigation system, I would have used probably, you know, one megalitre to one and a half megalitres per hectare. So, probably used about a tenth of the water to, to get it to establish. Now, obviously we've had rain on this crop here, so it hasn't had a lot of irrigation since. But as I say, in that initial, you know, uh, uh, watering up period, um, we gave this, I think, 20 hours of water. So with a 0.8 of a millimetre per hour, it's about 16 millimetres of, of irrigation. You, you know, you can give this small amounts of water. I'm giving it 5 millimetres today, you know, which is roughly 60 hours of pumping. And, uh, and we're still working out the irrigation schedule, but we're trying to work on, uh, you know... Um, you know, ET, so and and just bring that back to hours of pumping, and uh, and and so you can be fairly fairly um, you know discreet about that. And also, you know, fertil fertigation is a wonderful asset to do. You know, you can put you know 10, 10 kilos of in, and we we greened this up. It was a little bit stripy after um, some of the issues we had with the planter. So and we managed to green it up with ten kilos of in, and you know, it's a it's a great way to go. If that had been a fair irrigation system, I would have used maybe two hits of, of fer fertilizer. Whereas here, I'm probably going to give this, you know, 10 or 15 um, doses of fertiliser. So you can eke it out, and I'm sure you can be, you know, far, far it's far better for the environment. I mean, we're not going to have any runoff here. Um, we can use much less fertiliser and target it to the plant. And so, you know, we're less likely to have losses. We're more likely to put that, that nutrition where the plant needs it and, uh, and not have, have losses through a runoff or denitrification or whatever. Evan Shannon sees a great potential for drip irrigation in the Burdekin region. These blocks that are under fire irrigation, which are having problems right now, some of them need levelling. And uh, if you've got a, you know, a, an alluvial soil in the, in the delta of the Burdekin, and you've got to open up you know, topsoil and level subsoil and whatever else, you could spend six, seven thousand dollars a hectare easily, which is what you've got looking at. A situation like this is going to cost something like that. So it's the same cost. And yet you can do things in a very precise manner. And, and as the, you know, our environmental stewardship is going to be looked at more and more closely, and I, and I think certainly there's some issues, but I think we can actually move into drip in some examples where we shouldn't be uh, using our current irrigation system. It is a sentiment echoed by Home Hill cane grower Aaron Linton. This whole, whole farm on this side was five blocks and they were irrigated, flood irrigated through plastic fluming everywhere, it was very inefficient and the whole farm drained to the middle. Um, so I thought, well that's unmanageable, I had to do something. So we sort of did a few calculations of different ways we can laser, laser the block for, for furrow irrigation and the infrastructure for pipelines and recycle pits. Um, didn't come out too much less expensive than, than trickle, if, if at all any. If, by the time I lasered the ground properly for for the right grade for the proper soakage, it would probably work out a lot more expensive in that scenario. When deciding which drip irrigation product to install, Aaron Linton, like most other recent drip irrigation developments in the Burdekin, chose a heavier wall product than the traditional thin wall irrigation tape. I went for the, the PC tape. Yep. Uh, the PC Netafim tape and um, the reason being there is that I can have a uniform uniform irrigation. Um, it's a thicker tape, it seems, in my mind it seems more permanent, um, it's not just a 
something that you put down for veggies for three months and pull up. Paul Villas, who farms just out of air, also chose his drip irrigation product with a more permanent system in mind. We're currently using the product that Netifins recommend for sugarcane, which is um, DripNet 22250, uh, which is a pressure compensated dripper. Um, it's a heavy wall tape. Uh, we've go gone to this tape to try and we're aiming to get 10 to 15 years out of the tape, which, which makes the whole uh, setup cost and outlay uh, much more manageable. Paul Villas has had drip irrigation on his property for four years and he has compared flood and drip irrigated sugarcane crops side by side over that period. Still the majority of our, the majority of our farm is still on the, on the old flood system. Um, we're, we're still progressing with, with the drip um, but we have had some very positive results uh, so far. Uh, with a, around 30 tonne to the hectare increase in yield uh, over the flood, which has been consistently uh, replicated over the, over the last four years. The results from the drip irrigated blocks on the Villas farm show an average cane yield increase of 25% over flood irrigation. Also, the amount of nitrogen fertiliser was significantly reduced without a drop in yield. Yoram Krontel is agronomist in charge of sugarcane crops for Netafim and says the development of drip irrigation systems in the Burdekin is part of a global trend. I think uh, in terms of drip we, we're in a, in a way in a good moment because on the, the sugarcane is going through a, a phase where uh, the stability of production is very important and that's why many farmers go into uh, drip irrigation in order to increase the yield and guarantee the stability of the production. So uh, in quite a few markets we're doing very well. I believe that the rate of growth of drip irrigated sugarcane is about 20,000 hectares per year. We find today that on drip we can reduce the amount of water, we can save about 30 to 40 percent of the water that we apply and the yield is about as well as 20 to 30 percent increase on the yield. And of course the extended ratoon life, so you can go with drip for six, seven and we calculate for eight ratoons on over drip. Besides the yield increases, other attractions of drip irrigated sugarcane are obvious, as Aaron Linton explains. I can run the, run the system on my phone um, from wherever I am. Um, just the other day I was, I was sailing and um, we had a minute and I, I actually started my pump and checked all my moisture probes and, uh, while I was out on the water. And that sounds like a good thing to do for, instead of being here all the time. It, you're not the slave to the farm, you can manage it from wherever you are. If the demand for sugar continues to increase at the current rate, and the positive yield results from drip continue to be observed, more and more of the vertical sugar crops could be irrigated with drip irrigation. <laughs>